we are recording this intro from oh that guy's getting pulled over <laughs> so we are recording this intro from the road uh we are driving back home to idaho from utah and there's a motorcycle cop that's been creeping up on a dude and he got pulled over so anyways uh yeah, we made the trip over to Utah for the Total Archery Challenge at Snowbird Ski Resort outside of Salt Lake. And the original plan was to record quite a few podcasts while we were there. And due to time constraints and people doing events and here and that and this and that, those didn't happen like we thought they would. But we, we did end up recording this episode here today. Uh, in the Black Rifle Coffee tent up there with a few of their their employees, uh, guys from their art department, and a couple other guys as well. So it was pretty fun. What did you think of the trip there, Kevin? Right now I'm going to move the microphone over to Kevin because he's driving, and we're safe, God damn it. We both have CDLs. Come on. <laughs> um, it was a good drive. Other than fucking minivans, get out of my way. Um, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> that woman was about 173 years old. But anyways, <laughs> Kevin's going to tell you his uh, favorite parts, I guess, about our trip. Yeah, we hooked up with a lot of really cool guys there. Kevin hooked up with a lot of guys. <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, they're always super cool. Um, we made friends with a lot of people that we were already friends with, made better friends with. Um, super fun. The hotel was awful. You know, we should have just slept in the tent that we have together. That would have been a lot better. Um, yeah, Snowbird is awesome. Go check it out. They have a lot of stuff for kids to do up there, too. Um, anyway, yeah, we had a really good time. Yeah, the, I'm going to dive a little deeper into our hotel experience. <laughs> so we booked the hotel online. And online, the pictures, because me and Kevin are sharing a room here made it look and sound like it was a little more spacious than it, it turned out to be. Uh, there was one king-size bed and a pull-out mattress on the couch. We thought there was going to be two beds or like a separate room or something. That's not what happened. Kevin wouldn't cuddle with me in the king bed, so I got that to myself last night. He slept on the pull-out couch because he's crazy. I told him I wouldn't make it weird. But anyways, so yeah, the, the customer service was horrible they got a bunch of young people uh, because i mean you people listening nowadays know nowadays that nobody can find good workers at a lot of places and the customer service is lacking seems like everywhere so yeah overall the hotel experience was shitty but other than that we had a good time it was it was close to the resorts we could get there um and yeah so we ended up doing this episode today kind of impromptu we were about to leave and because we couldn't we didn't have time to talk to the people we originally had planned and the guys that are on the podcast today, we were talking about getting them on and it just happened. So it's, I think a pretty good episode. We did record this one without headphones. Uh, so I haven't got into the editing phase as of right now when we're recording this intro. So hopefully it sounds all right. We, I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah. So first we will like, as always mention, Mountain Primal. Mountain Primal Meats, they are one of our sponsors and they're they've been real good to us. If you go to their website and purchase anything, use our code mission prep all one word at checkout and that gets you a little discount and it lets them know that we're helping them out, which helps us out. So go do it. Go buy some steaks or a shirt or something. Uh, you can also buy merch from us if you choose to at shop.spreadshirt.com slash mission prep and yeah go get yourself some mission prep sh merch shit I was going to say shirt merch <laughs> mission prep shit yeah uh, and that also helps support us there's many ways you can support us best way is just fucking tell somebody about this share it subscribe review like that helps us more than you know and follow us on instagram as well at mission prep podcast I know for a fact we'll have a few new listeners as of this episode that we met over the weekend. So welcome to the show. Hope you guys enjoy it. And we do have one new sponsor. Um, actually, this trip was kind of 
made possible by the sponsor. Uh, this one's a little different than the way we've done it with Mountain Primal and stuff. So this is a local company out of where we are, out of Boise, Idaho, the Boise area. So if you are in the Boise area, the Treasure Valley, and you could use their services, definitely hit them up and tell them you heard about them from us. Hell, even if you don't live there, just call and say you heard about us. That'd be fun. Um, that you heard about from us. So the company is Amp Tree Works, A-M-P Tree Works. They do everything from chopping down trees to maintaining trees to getting rid of the stumps. Kevin actually used to work with them. So I guess you can tell them more about what they do. That's exactly what they do, Jake. Okay, good, because I've never done it. <laughs> so, yeah, any tree work, uh, certified arborist, and they do a very good job. And, yeah, so like I said, they're a local company. If you go to amptreeworks.com, you can find them there. A M P T R E E R W R O R K S, as I butchered that. Amp Tree Works. I'm sure you guys know how to spell. Dot com. And, or you can give them a call at 208 860 3683. And call, and uh, they'll, if you tell them that you heard about them through us, they'll give you a free bid. Even though I think they give you a free bit if you if you don't say they heard about it from us, but tell them you heard about them on our podcast. All right, well I guess we can get into the episode, and we hope you guys enjoy it. Do you have anything else, Mister Kevin? Nope. Be safe out there. I agree. Be safe and enjoy the episode. We are doing an impromptu podcast at the Total Archery Challenge in Snowbird, Utah, and we're going to let our guests introduce themselves. We have a couple guys here today, so you go first. Hey, how's it going? Morgan Mason here. What do you do? Oh. What do you do? <laughs> a beatbox. <laughs> no, a professional beatboxer. Exactly. No, I, uh, I work programs to help military veterans, um, military spouses, gold star families through hunting and fishing initiatives, specifically aimed at conservation and just kind of taking them out, fostering the connection to the landscape, um, engage them with meaningful education and involving some conservation and kind of historical background and context. And, uh, you know, just, like, look to see if they're motivated to get involved in that and just provide some pathways for them. So that's kind of, that's my mission, and that's what I do. Perfect. I'm Chris Hunt, and I draw tactic squatches on sharks. (laughs) Um, So less serious, slightly. Um, (laughs) I'm the art director at Black Rifle, and um, I come from a comic book background, uh, writing, creating, drawing. Um, and yeah, Evan found me on the Instagrams and I'm a part of the stray cats that he's collected at the Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in Salt Lake city. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that's probably like the high level cliff notes version. And you're also a Boise, Idaho native, such as like yes. you Kevin, yeah. which we just found out. So that's cool. Yep. Yep. As I, as I said earlier, I was the voice of Jackson's food stores on yeah, the radio. That's hilarious. Yep. <laughs> uh, How you doing? Yeah, by all means, yeah, go ahead and we grab got one. people here. We're in the Black Rifle Coffee tent, so we got people coming up and getting some coffee. And so, if you hear anything in the background, it's you're welcome. We're providing superior customer service while we're here. Yes, yes, we are. So, and then you guys know me and Kevin. So, oh, you, you do? I think they know us. Okay. I would, I would hope people that listen to this know us. I really want. I want to take that one, that like <clears throat> the kind of like '80s throwback, and make it into a crop top. That's the one I want to give for my wife. But I'm not sure Just what size she wears. We had one kind of based on that. That uh, This is a shout-out to Gary Stevens, our design director. It was called Pablo's Espresso Bar. Um, Evan hated it and killed it with fire. <laughs> um, but as a result, we got sort of like the kind of cool 80s, kind of like neon Saved by the Bell stuff yeah. going on a little bit. Um, and it somehow slid by because Evan also wanted to kill that too. Oh, um, man. But, yeah. So, um, so let me be a peacock. Let me <laughs> I want a peacock. Let me be me. Yeah. What was I going to say? I don't remember. I did just te- text my wife to ask her shirt size because okay. I am going to get her a shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, so did, did I know you did you shoot yesterday too? I shot on Friday, Friday. and that was the first time I've ever done attack before. And actually, I just got my bow 
uh, when I came down to Salt Lake about ooh, eight months ago. Um, like like day one, Evan's like, I'll show you. We're gonna hooch up, and then like ten like ten minutes into, he's like, You got a bow? I'm like, No. He's like, You want one? I'm like, Yeah. Um, and then I I found out later that I got his uh, old exploded bear archery bow, which I'm very proud of. Um, wow. Everybody else has got those sweet PSE Ferraris, and uh, I've got Evan's old Richard Ryan's old bow. Oh. Um, so yeah, we're just keeping it in the family at this point. That's nice. cool. And I saw you got some fancy kicks. These are the Krispies. Yeah, because I destroyed the hakas that I had on Friday. Because as it turns out, uh, soft-soled Vibram boots don't do well on goat trails in oh. Utah. Um, so, yeah, I uh, threw those away, and now I'm breaking in some Krispies, which I will not be taking out of the mountain today because I am still broken physically. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, and I haven't got a chance to shoot yet. I've been on the road since, like, late May and dragging my bow around with me. And uh, I'm pretty sure that pins are off and damage has been done. And so I need to go to the practice range and, like, reconfirm 20 at, to start off at the least before I go start throwing bombs and donating arrows. Oh, man. <laughs> did, so did you both grow up hunting? I did. So I grew up out, like, on a quarter section farm homestead section in Kansas. And, I mean, by the time I was... I was like walking around at an early age carrying a stick emulating like my father and his friends like while yeah. we're bird hunting and like following the dogs around um but yeah like all the way up through like graduating high school and on like i've like i've hunted my whole life yeah cool cool yeah i uh moved to boise when i was nine and it was just my mom and me and we were dirt ass poor and my mom did a pretty good job with us with a boy but like you know, part of it was fiscal, part of it was just she lacked the knowledge. And then my stepdad showed up, and I got the man lessons, like, real quick. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, he'd take me to, like, Le Bois, like, drive me out to Columbia Village, and uh, we'd be, like, silenced for, like, ten minutes, and he'd be like, you ever been in a fight? Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, 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 time to be Yeah, and he'd just be staring over the steering wheel, one hand up at 12 o'clock, and he'd be like, if you ever get in a fight with a man who's bigger than you, hit him as hard as you can over his heart. <laughs> might stop it and it'll drop him might kill him too but if it doesn't he won't get back up and i'd just be staring at him in silence like oh okay um so i went through hunter zed with him and he grew up on a ranch in northern california and like he he had to do the whole like you know the, the cattle dog has puppies like puppy goes in the bag kind of thing you know and um so he like and they had they had a poach just to survive they were so poor so like his view on hunting was not a pleasurable memory so he took me i'm air quoting right now elk hunting one time um which was us just like crashing through like blm land like just <laughs> i mean making as much noise as possible <laughs> and i was just like well i had like my like a winchester 3030 with like iron sights on it like so i always wanted to do it and i actually i actually now that we're now that i'm at black rifle i want to figure out a way to kind of like get into like an apprenticeship program or something like because I want to do it. I want to, like, be responsible as someone who can, like, harvest their own meat. But mm -hmm. um, it's just prior to coming to Black Rifle, I was, like, working, like, 70, 80-hour yeah. weeks and just pretty poor. Like, yeah. you know, doing what I loved. But, like, there was no, like, luxury. Like, luxury was going out and not eating at home. Yeah. You That's know? the thing, dude, is you, like, no pun intended, you got to eat shit for a while because that's where you learn, you know, yourself for one like you get that struggle you have the humility like man i'm not just awesome just because i do something you know you're not one of these kids it's like oh, i'm just awesome because i'm breathing you know amazing like you gotta eat shit and then you know hopefully that gets you somewhere i mean and ideally it should and if it doesn't then you're like you gotta have that big self-talk like okay it's the hard truth that i shouldn't be doing this maybe i should change my avenue but for you obviously it's like okay this is paying off like i eat shit for a while and then now I can start going the, in the direction I want to go, you know? Yeah. Just uh, just to throw in on that real quick, like, that was, like, my mom was my person that I looked at for that. Because, like, my mom graduated high school, really intelligent woman, but, like, it was a hooker by crook kind of thing. Like, you know, two, three jobs at a time. Like, she ran a, she managed a nightclub at one point. She oh, wow. ran a production line for Victoria's Secret. Um and like got a temporary job for a company that was in Boise called Trust Trust McMillan and taught herself enough about marketing and graphic design that she got a job she wasn't qualified for on paper. Um, and so like, uh, and that's, and when she got the job in Boise, she was like, do you want to, do you want to go to Boise? And I was in Ohio at the time. And I was like, do they have mountains there? 
And she's like, yeah, I'm like, sign me up. Let's go. Like, uh, and so for me, like that was, that was always the person I looked at where it's like, oh, well, I mean, so if I want it, if I want something, you just, you just work really hard at it. You go in after hours, you stay there until the boss leaves kind of thing. And so when I was leaving high school, um, I thought I was going to go to art school and I was just, this is just too much money. And both my stepdad and my mom were like, you can be a garbage man if you want, just be the best garbage man and don't carry debt. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was just, that's just how I did the comic book thing. I just, and I went and found mentors and, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, eat shit. Yeah. Chop wood, carry water, eat shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then, like you said, getting around people that, like getting around the guys at Black Rifle who are all doing cool shit, whether it's hunting or whether, whatever it is, that, it's motivating. And I, we've seen that with our podcast is people we have on are doing cool cool shit and so we're like we want to do some stuff we want to we want to get out there that's why we're here we both of us are a little out of our comfort zone but we come here we're meeting a lot of cool people just like you two who we never met and then some people who have these big followings online and they're kind of celebrities and it's like do you say hi to them and yeah you do you just go out of your comfort zone and that's the only way you're gonna if you push through that it's the only way things are gonna happen and now we've got guys some guys lined up to come on the podcast stuff that wouldn't have happened if we wouldn't have came on this trip or went out of our comfort zone a little to go talk to him, you know? Yeah, and it's it's kind of cool to see, like, your mother's path and, like, your path of going through and just, like, buckling down, like, the nose of the grindstone. It's like, that's exactly how, like, I grew up. Like, I grew up, like, bucking, like, bales on the farm. And my dad's advice to me was, like, learn a trade. Yeah. And I was like... I was like, no, nope, no, I don't think I will. But then, <laughs> 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 but like, I ended up kind of doing that. I learned photography, and that was like a huge path for me, and like really got me interested in certain things, and it became a passion. And then, like, looking through what I was taking photos of, and like that ended up being like my other passions of hunting, and so becoming a veteran, um, and like taking all of these sort of passions, and like going out as far as I can, finding the mentors like you're talking about finding those people that can help you um, along the way and just continue to always learn and develop your own path. And it's been, I'm like beat up and bruised from that, but like it is so rewarding to know that like, you know, I don't have a college degree, um, but like I do from all the YouTube videos and all the articles and everything and all the mentor time and, and spending that to develop like my passion path and like getting to hear where I am today. It's like, it's, in, it's incredible yeah. to get that sort of fulfillment. Yeah. And again, yeah, don't even get hung up. I, w I would tell them no someone not to get hung up on the college degree thing because we do this weird thing where as soon as we get a title, we sometimes forget to still hustle. And sit on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You sit on this title. Like, I can't tell you how many people that I've met that have graduated ahead of me, whether it's the physics program or even other programs who are sitting on it, essentially. You know, it's like you still have to hustle. In fact, push harder because now you have knowledge. Yeah. Use that knowledge to give you a tool to even push harder to what you want to do. But you see complacent people sitting on that. I'm like, I'd rather have somebody who doesn't have a college degree because I know they're going to be fucking working their ass off yeah. or being creative, right? Like just thinking creative, creatively, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it works for some like pass and whatnot, but I'm sure like open heart surgeons probably need like some sort of degree and whatnot. But, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah those, the t for sure. Outliers. Yeah. But, but I mean, it's, it's great. And like, and then like being able to take my passions and like circle back around, like, so I deployed in like Oh three. Okay. And so after that, like that was my one and done. And then I just like, I had stuff to figure out and, and deal with like after that. And so I did that, learned a passion, figured out now I'm circling back around and like sharing my passion and path with others that hopefully like that's going to take that and like kind of inspire them through that. So so it's, it's long story short, it's, it's cool to hear about like other people that are self-made and like that hustle and that grinds out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was going to say, and that's kind of the cool thing about being at Black Rifle is that like my, I view it as a trade. Like I view art or whatever I do as a trade um, coming up with, you know, my parents own construction business. Grandpa owns a moving company. My dad is a truck driver. So to me, it's like you don't get to be inspired. You go and you show up every day and you do it. Um, and so like, being at Black Rifle, I hate to admit that I was surprised by how creative everybody was. Like, uh, because I, I'm used to like, you know, to me, business is a very creative environment. If you're taking nothing and making something, yeah. that's a creative act to me. And, but just as far, I guess on a nerdy level, like there's a lot, like, I mean, there's like soul snatchers that are coming in and we're talking about like 
Star Wars and uh, like comics, and it shouldn't surprise me growing up around combat vets and having a lot of friends that deployed. Like, you know, I'm aware of the fact that everybody's just a person, but I just did not know that there was going to be this high concentration of goober heads at Black Rifle. And I, it's it's it is the most creative, hardworking yeah. place I've ever worked at, or group of people I've worked with. Absolutely, no, that you you, it really is surprising. Even me, coming in and seeing other vets are that way is like, man, I thought I was just weird. Cause like, there's people listening to know like I've been through some fucking stupid shit like in my deployments, and I'm like, but I'll sit there and talk to someone about Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter all goddamn day, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, like I love Avatar, like. <laughs> yeah, like I'm the super huge nerd, you know. And I, I grew up. I loved anime. I still kind of do like the older stuff, you know. I love, oh, dude. I love that resurgence of uh, uh, what's it called the Masters of the Universe series on Netflix that Kevin Smith did. Super good, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk about it, dude. He's air pumping on the other side over here. Yeah. Yeah, the modern. Yeah, exactly. How he's actually a 16-year-old. Like what? Like whoa! Like this big, you know. And then all the people they brought into the voice acting. Obviously, Mark Hamill is amazing. You know, and, dude. Yeah. Is he Skeletor? Yeah. 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 Well, and you're a veteran as well. Oh, of course. <laughs> Okay. Oh, now, yeah, you didn't look that old, man. I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't ask me, don't ask me. Everybody's like, you're like, you're like 30-something, right? Yeah. Like, oh, you sweet summer child. You sweet Well, it's the beard, man. It's barely gray at all. I think it's a, I, have, I have gray all over the, the place. I don't just for men? Is, but from like 10 feet away, just for men? it looks dark. Is that, it? Is that yeah. the secret? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just for men and bear grease in the, in the beard. The envelope, that's what it is. So if I think everybody <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the key. Yeah, don't try to kiss me. Yeah. <laughs> you get close, maybe you start seeing all the wrinkles and everything. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, like I was saying, like, there's a huge dichotomy of veterans. So, and, I, dude, and I, like, the day we visited the, the, the skunk works, all that, I was like, I was so blown away. I did, was not expecting that. Like, a group full of, like, dudes, I was like, yes, man. Like, all these nerds in there just, like, stickers and like look at the t-shirts we're making i'm like oh this is awesome like this is at home like these are the same people i hang out with like in the the physics like, research group it's a bunch of like cool ass nerds like listening to rush and just like you know, like man like yeah it's awesome so i'm glad to see like black rifle is a part of that community it is absolutely not a polarizing you know uh hyper masculine community at all well and they i mean Evan started calling us the nerds in a piece of content, and then it kind of stuck. And, I mean, it's what we are, but it's also funny to me because it's it's almost like permission for everybody else to be nerdy then when they're down there, and then when they're with us doing silly stuff, like even the tiny bikes, you know, like, uh, <laughs> like I mean, like, yeah. I mean, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we went down to San Antonio for this big meeting, and then uh, I didn't go to Austin because I hate cities now, um, but um, they rode around on scooters, and Derek, who's like the Duke of the nerds, um, if Evan's the king, um, he came back and ordered a Jetson uh, electric bike and we were like ready to make fun of him even us as the nerds and then we all got on it and then immediately went to Costco and then each bought one and then we just started rolling around in, in the parking lot and like <laughs> people would, can, were giving it can I can I cuss am I allowed no go okay. ahead okay no, yeah okay Pussy yeah fart tits, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know I don't know the standards man. <laughs> yeah uh it, clearly I don't meet them um <laughs> yeah, people were giving a shit and then we'd be like we'd get off and be like get on the bike and like then it's like we tear did it one time and he just started playing queen immediately on his phone um and uh <laughs> and so like it, it's one of those things where like you know i i'm really glad to like the p small part that i think we play in black rifle is that we are we give people permission to kind of be themselves for one and we're we work really hard but we we try to ha enjoy it and have fun and show 
the other people that that's okay and like we're also there like two hours usually before everybody so when we're fucking around we've already put like eight nine hours mm-hmm. in um and uh I don't know. Like, I mean, like, you know, we've been helping, like, you know, other veterans, like, that are already in the company, like, try to, like, pursue creative paths. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed being able to teach people, start teaching people, because I was mentored. So, like, I this idea of, like, oral tradition being passed back and forth, like, to your, echo your sentiment about college, it's like we're somehow very quickly got mired in this idea that, like, you have to have permission from a larger group of people granted you know i want brain surgeons to have that piece of paper but like a lot of a lot of stuff was just an apprenticeship it was just you know Mm. information being exchanged sucking for a long time and so i really am proud of the fact that like a black rifle is a meritocracy but b that we're in a position that we can flame spot and talk to people and then like you know i never thought i'd be passing on the tradition of comics to you know veterans in yeah. in a coffee company but i think that's really really cool and that's what i'm really proud of is that like evan let us build skunk well he wanted to build it for one but he let us build it to be something that is more of like an engine for other for the company rather than just like oh we're gonna some cool shit which we clearly do and enjoy that but like it's it, it's I don't even know if people realize it yet, like what exactly it is, because uh, it's 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 meant to be more than just driving product. Yeah. Like uh, it's it's a, it's that space where people can come in and just feel at ease and explore things that you know they find interesting. Yeah. So one of the problems about not having headphones is when you introduce yourself, that mic was on mute because I, I put it on mute to go over there and get a cup of coffee. And these other mics probably picked it up. But once again, introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, Chris Jacka, I am a event specialist with Black Rifle Coffee. And he likes Who's Masters I, of the Universe. Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. I am, yeah, I, I am proud of my geek flag. That's, Which I, you guys listening to this might have heard that twice. I don't know because we don't have headphones on. But, <laughs> but I realized I, I had muted it. So, so yeah, that's And he that's has a rich, dark say. beard. Oh, yeah, and he yes, does, he's a young-looking man, as we've talked about. There's hardly any gray as long as you stay 10 feet away. Yeah. Well, they chicken. probably cut my end of it, right? I complimented his beard and his good looks. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it bears repeating, It's apparently. funny because I forgot about that phrase you called Evan the King of Nerds. And I don't know why it popped in my mind as you just said that. Remind me of, like, David Bowie in Labyrinth. <laughs> 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 Jareth, with, like, his huge, like, bulge and his, like, yeah. his, like you know, his... Yeah. Okay, okay, I need the microphone for a second. <laughs> now, now you're talking about bulge. I can't tell you how many times I've Ron, like the Blackbeard bag, like, like the, there's a sash over his dick because for some reason every time there's even the hint of like a cod piece or like some business down there, Evan's like, I don't know, I think there's too much dick in that. Like, <laughs> too much dick. Uh, yeah, so like, I'm constantly having to like, like, like sort of mitigate the, the the dick factor in a lot of our drawings. So it's funny <laughs> that you bring up David Bowie and Labyrinth because that is clearly the largest of cod pieces in cinema history uh i mean just glorious yeah yeah and if there's one community that's going to like go elaborate on like drawing dicks it's the military community <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> if there's a will there's a way like yeah like so, like seth in a um super bed oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> sit around and draw dicks sit all day and drag video, I'm you <laughs> matt, requested, <laughs> matt requested something of me for a, fr- a, a person that he met in an airport and that they got along with really well and this is going to make sense to everybody here right now but luckily not for you guys at home <laughs> yeah no no video i'm, I'm going to tell you what <laughs> the, the, the phrase they came up, up with was strong hands big dick <laughs> that is dick. hilarious and that is yes. that is the predator handshake yeah it is you need to release that <laughs> <laughs> I, I want that on a pair of ranger panties <laughs> that's perfect clearly Clearly, we did our job. Yes. Yeah. yes, you did. Yeah, Matt. Matt described this to me, and I was like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> yeah. Like it was after work one day. I was like, "I will. I got you." See, that's what Dude. one of these days we need is a guy like you that can come in and help us with the creative shit. Like, like we talked about, like creating a logo, right? Yeah. Which we do. Have, we yeah. have. We have a friend who created a logo for us. Very creative person. I wish we had someone that was like part of our crew that had that part. We have some creativity to us, but. It, when it comes to putting it to reality, it's like no, uh, no shit. Yeah. Well, and like when when we came to black to the headquarters of Black Rifle and met everybody down there, it, 
everybody was so nice, so cool. They were making that little mini bow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was like right when that was starting, because yeah. right after the the puppet CEO thing <laughs> video came out, and everybody was friendly. They showed us some like prototype T-shirts and stuff like that. That was really cool to see, and it's cool to see a company that that embraces creativity embraces being a nerd like you were saying because like me coming not coming from the veteran world and i think most people like me you see like the veteran and you see black rifle you think a bunch of bros a bunch of hyper masculine and that's not always the case people can be goofy and have a good time and you guys are goofy oh yeah vets that's their sense of humor in vets i love it i love that shit yeah yep yeah it's It's like that's how you get through stress Yes, and it's it's cool to see. And there's other companies doing kind of following suit, yep. and that's kind of what we're trying to do with our podcast. As we get bigger and we're trying to run it like a company, like allow the silliness, allow, and maybe one day we will bring more people into our thing. We're trying to grow here and, and let people be themselves. And that could be politically, that could be whatever. Just people be yourself. As long as you, as long as you do good work, I don't care – what your political views are. I don't care what if you're silly, if you fuck around, as long as the work gets done. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I, and that's kind of, I'm kind of a goofy guy. Kevin's a goofy guy. And and just be yourself as long as you're getting work done. And it's cool to see companies doing Kevin it. Yeah. Wants that too. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard when you're trying to be yourself and people try to polarize you, like everything going on lately. For instance, like the comment I made earlier, like, I, I don't know if it off put the guys, but I was like, I want a knife. You called the Blood Eagle. <laughs> so I was like, that's <laughs> fucking sick, dude. Because he says a skin fling knife, or whatever. Like that's a Blood Eagle, man. But then well, someone's gonna be like, Oh, Blood Eagle. So Viking mythology. So you're a racist and you're a Nazi. Like what the fuck, dude? I'm literally People shaking right now. Yeah. 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 Well, and yeah. like, <laughs> like we we've, we've had conversations this weekend so many times. People that say that shit. They're never going to come up to you and say it to your face. It's all on the internet. It's, I, got a, I, to, I think I told you guys earlier, I got a comment on our Instagram today about a post I made last week, and it had to do with Black Rifle, and it was all the bullshit that's just recently happened. And th- that whoever made that comment, I guarantee he wouldn't come up and say that to me. I guarantee it. And that's all internet. Or he would be part of the new jiu-jitsu. So I'm well, his ass I would like, fucking yeah. I'd <laughs> choke his ass. But no, it's <laughs> it, people don't. And anybody that says that shit, to me, it's like you're a piece of shit if you're gonna go online and talk shit to people that you don't know, and, 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 I, and that's there's a difference. If you have a problem with someone, you want to go up and talk to them, go for it. Yeah. But like when we you, comment on things, we do it in a positive way, well, positive reinforcement. Doing it in person, you have to face consequences of that. And I'm not talking about getting your ass kicked. It's just consequences of looking that person in the eye and seeing maybe you're hurting them right now. You know? Yeah. You don't see that online. You you might fucking ruin someone's day. You're never gonna know. Yeah. In real life, you see that. You you have to deal with. You just you're a piece of shit because you made them feel like a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of like my brother told me about this from listening. Like he's like a religious listener of Joe Rogan, um, like pretty much the whole world. But uh, his deal is like post and go. So he'll like post something and he just will not look at it. And so that's like all those keyboard and that, warriors and yep. that's hard when that's when you're trying to grow something. Like I've learned on our podcast, I'm trying to grow stuff. So I am looking at. I see comments. I see people that follow us. I I try to engage because we're trying to grow something. Yeah. He's on a different level. Yeah, so someone like (laughs) Joe Rogan, who has probably 12 million followers or something, he can do that. He can post enough, and people are still going to like what he's doing. But when you're like an up-and-coming brand or company, you have to be involved and be aware of the people that are are taking in your stuff. And it's unfortunate because you do see shitty comments. Like, I I literally were on a drive up here this morning. And I was the thing was was it was a post about the BRCC fund that's doing good things for fucking people, and someone comments there they hate patriots and all this shit. It's like, are you kidding me? Spend five minutes with anybody from Black Rifle Coffee, and you're gonna find out that's not the case. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I'm like I'm like a direct reflection of like what BRCC gives and like the foundation has done through my program. They like they've helped buy like wildlife guzzlers that we've dug in and like we've had volunteers come out on Camp Pendleton. They paid for the wildlife guzzlers with us. We dug them in to increase the wildlife habitat to then and let more service members hunt and fish like on Camp Pendleton because of it. And so lots of, yeah. And so like Kira came out to like one of our veteran camps that we threw and was like helping us out buy groceries for the vets that are coming out and like giving, helping like support this experience for them. And so any of that talk is just uneducated bullshit. Yeah. I I a hundred percent agree. And the, we've talked about black rifle on our podcast endlessly and we're not sponsored by them, but that doesn't matter to me because first of all, the fucking product is good. 
I don't care anybody. I, I'm a coffee nerd. The coffee's delicious. I've had about 12 cups this morning, <laughs> and I'm I'm gonna have to pee so bad on the drive back to Boise. Yeah, don't shit I'm probably gonna grab an RTD on the way out. But CCR just banging on. But like, la- yes, that's what I'm talking about. So, but like last night at the at the fund event, the charity event, we talked to so many guys from Black Rifle who. I've seen online, and I've talked to all you guys about this, but I've either talked to him on the phone, I've never met him in person, they were on our podcast through Zoom, never met him in person, including Evan, who is a busy guy, everybody wants to talk to that fucking guy, and he took last night, what, 20, 25 minutes out of his night to stand there and talk with me and Kevin, and he's a good dude, and he has good intentions, and he usually follows through on those good intentions from what I've seen, and that's everybody I've dealt with with Black Rifle, from, then, like, from the art department to the top of the company. Mm-hmm. To the bo- I don't know what the bottom of the company is, but everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, this is another one of the nerds? Yeah. Feel free to say hi on, on Mike. Yeah, We're just bringing in up. guests. What's your name? My name is Camber Carroll. I'm part of the art department. Perfect. <laughs> also a veteran, yep. I'm one of the skunks, though, so... Yeah, we actually, we cool. came down to the art department a few months ago. We were there oh, doing an interview with Lucas. Should, yeah, no, I remember and you guys, yeah. Yeah, and we were just talking about how everybody we've dealt with from every department of Black Rifle has been fucking amazing, and that's why we talk about them all the time. Oh, okay, so, cool. Yeah, so welcome, well, I appreciate w- welcome on Mission Prep. Well, thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great to be here. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and everybody here has dealt with people with Black Rifle or works with people or works with Black Rifle. You all know how good everybody is. Well, like, it was cool last night on the, the after party, um, like, watching Evan swing his little girl around and, like, uh, watching yes. Matt Best, like, yes. throw him up on the shoulders. And then, like, how fucking incredible was it to watch Tear propose to Nicole oh, last yeah. night? That was awesome. Like, and I'm, he, like, he getting sang goosebumps. one of my favorite songs. Dude, that was so much, yeah, yeah. Like, it's so cool to, like, see that, like, family and that core element of, like, it's, like, all growing and, like, that... I don't know. There's just something powerful about, like, powerful about, like, the element of like that tight knit community that's like giving back, yeah. and it's it's just amazing to or, see. Or to see Jonathan, who's an amputee in a wheelchair, climb yeah. on a pack frame on the back of Brady, and Brady walk him around, and he's like doing fucking dips on the pack frame, and the man has no legs. Yeah. Where where else are you gonna go and see at an event and see shit like that? And everybody's together, and every it's just a really cool community. Yeah. Well, and like. I don't say this lightly, um, but, man, I might get emotional. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, <sighs> sorry. Uh, I grew up in a family business, in a family business and, uh, whew, sorry. You're good, Ooh, man. Okay. You're good. Uh, it, it's still work, you know, like, you know, we still want to choke each other out uh, occasionally. Oh, yeah. Um, every other day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, which is probably going to reinforce my point here where it, I'm a pretty logical, rational person, and I try to be. And I try not to let my emotions, like, you know, guide me 100%. But it feels like family. Like, yeah. it feels that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I mean, like, there was a point yesterday where Evan's girls were, I, I'm like a tree they climb every time they see me. But um, uh, Were they stealing your hat, too? I saw a lot oh, of that, hats that, they, stolen. I finally yeah. just said, please stop. I need help. <laughs> I need to take a break. And then they went to Matt. Um, and there was a point where, like, uh, the oldest, which we'll just keep yep, everything, yep. yeah, uh, was uh, trying to find the hat that we had hid, and Evan came over and was kind of like getting in on it. He's like, "I have to go run down the truck. You just, you want, can you watch him real quick?" Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, like, yes, I can watch your children for yes. you. You know, like uh, and that. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Like, where there's it's a family. Yeah, like in and. I have described it this way before where I never felt, even with my real family, I never really felt like I was a handful of times. Like, I mean, clearly I don't feel like I'm like alienated or ostracized, but like I never really felt like I found my people. Yeah. And I feel like I found the spaceship with the other aliens on it Mm -hmm. at Black Rifle. Um, And, you know, even talking about like the dark and silly humor, it's like, you know, I didn't I'm not a vet. I didn't deploy, but like I have things that have happened, you know, yeah. like, and there's a certain type of personality that I just gravitate towards where it's like, I can just tell by someone's humor, like, Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. We're right. okay. I, I, you, we can talk, you know, like, uh, and I'll talk to anybody, you know, yeah. like, uh, I'm an introvert that figured out how to just hack the system. Um, but like they're like, it, it hurts to, to, 
see what people I, we can't really talk about too much with the new york times and everything yeah. but like but like to see what is being said and it's like you said spend five minutes with these guys um it it, it hurts you yeah. know like because it's I say it kind of felt personal on some of those, especially seeing, you know, the comments that they're making and and knowing the truth of of what's going on and 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 seeing the you know just the downright malicious uh, stuff that that people are saying about it and uh, uninformed the people that don't know what they're talking about you know and you kind of have to just kind of grin and bear it a little a little bit and it helps having that you know close knit community with with everybody the employees you know you're all going through the same thing you're all thinking the, the same thing about it so uh having that kind of support and knowing that uh you know there's there's this there's so much positivity that's that's not being seen kind of behind the scenes and uh and our, our customers are the grace like the die hard people that support us they uh they see through it so we yeah. we get a lot of positivity from them so that yeah. helps as well and i think they a lot of people assume too much. They assume the brooding, hyper-masculine man, right? Or a veteran, sorry, I mean, a veteran in general, or people who work for Black Rifle in general. It's like, no, you guys are all human. And it's okay to be emotional, just like right now, because we're fucking human and we understand each other. So it's not weird. Yeah. Instead of saying, you know, seeing Tear last night, it's okay to be human and want to, like, give yourself to a woman in front of everybody. Yeah. And it's okay for me to be super emotional about that when I watched it, because, like, I'm fucking human too. I yeah. love that shit. Like, yeah. yeah, it's well, awesome. And even like, like we I talked about with you guys a little bit ago when me and Kevin arrived here yesterday. Like we saw the black rifle tent. We do know some of the guys, but we're like, ah, I don't know if we should go in and bug them, whatever. And then we ended up hanging out with some guys last night. That was cool. Then today when we came in, you guys were so welcoming to us. We've been sitting in here with you all day. Yeah. yeah. And like <laughs> I feel I, I feel like I I feel like I've known you guys forever. Like we're sitting here bullshitting and. That's why we decided to record this podcast right now, because you guys were so welcoming. Everybody's really fucking cool. One of you guys told me, yeah, lay some of your stickers out on the table over there. Maybe someone will grab some. I've been drinking, like I said, 12 cups of your coffee, (laughs) and it's it's really cool how welcoming everybody is. And like I said earlier, a company like Black Rifle, you have people that want to be involved, a bunch of probably hanger-ons that want to be involved, and we didn't want to seem like that, right? We don't want to be like, we want to be involved with you guys. Which we do because we fucking every guy we've met, every guy and gal we've met from Black Rifle has been amazing to us, and that's one of the biggest reasons for the growth of this podcast is because of this company. So it's like, just like I said, you guys welcoming us in here. We're sitting in your chairs, drinking your coffee, and bullshitting. Well, that's that's. I mean, that's. I'm sold on it, and we want to sell Black Rifle and other people listen to this that might yeah. have a doubt, which I don't think they do because transparent. People listen to this aren't fucking worthless. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a transparent environment. You don't meet someone from Black Rifle and they have that facade up, right? It's transparency, which is genuine, and that and that you pick up on that really quick. You know what I mean? And that's that's all you really get, which is perfect. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and also you guys have people from different backgrounds. It's not all veterans like yourself. Fuck no. Yeah. There's people from different backgrounds. There's nerds. There is masculine dudes. There's guys with masculine big. Masculine nerds. M- yeah, there's <laughs> masculine <laughs> nerds. The, the one right behind you right now. There's there's dudes with tattoos. There's there's all that. There's women. There's men. There's people from. Transitioning. Well, yeah. Give give the mic real quick. Go, go ahead. We we had a person that transition that was transitioning at work and it just happened one yes. day and we were like, no one said anything. It just because it, it doesn't matter. Because they're just another person. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I and mean, like because the name rifle is in or the rifles and black rifle. Everybody assumes like. They're hardcore. This there's it takes all types of people. We're to run rational a successful people. Business. We're rational. Yes. That, that's the cool part. Almost unequivocally, we're just people. Like yes. And it's that whole like you're doing your thing and you're swinging your fist and as soon as it hits my nose, it's a different story. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's what it takes. People from like that's kind of the tagline of this podcast. People from all walks of life. That's what it takes, man. It takes all kinds of weirdos and and goofy people and serious people and emotional everybody. And that's kind of what we're seeing with this is talking to people, no matter how different everybody is, we all want the same shit in life. We want our kids and our families and our everybody to be healthy and happy and just successful. And it doesn't matter what your religious, political, any of those backgrounds are. We all want the same shit. And anybody that talks shit, like we've said, talks shit about Black Rifle would never say it in person. And 
if they do, then good for them. Face yeah. the consequences of it's, talking to someone in person. Yeah. I think it's so nice to – it'd be nice to just be able to do something that sometimes as a release is just not – doesn't have to be oriented one way or another in a political spectrum. I mean, I've been super lately, especially I've been super motivated by – we were talking about earlier, I mean, Morgan, about, like, do photography, astrophotography. And because I've been following uh, this page of Brooke Little Bear. Dude, and they, she's, they all probably know her. Yeah, yeah. she was she was by yesterday. Really? I've seen yeah. her at the shop. Dude, I can yep. see her. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, I met Brooke. Yeah, 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 I met Brooke. Dude, yeah, super inspiring. Right yeah. She's just, like, going around Africa, Alaska. It's just real content. She's there. She's just doing it. And there's beautiful pictures. And the way she goes about it, it's just like, man, there's – if anybody had anything negative to say about what she's doing, like they should just choke themselves <laughs> yeah. because this is like super, this is super inspiring to me to see someone doing that. Cause I don't know what's inspiring to shit out of me. And then you were like, Oh, ask for photography. I was like, fuck, maybe I should, you know, learn from her or some people like that or you and you know, kind of apply that same thing. Cause it's the vibe I get from that page is super good. You know what I mean? Well, and like I said, being around other creative people, cause yeah. like most of my life, I didn't think of myself as a creative person until I started this podcast and I've had to get creative. Whether it was trying to design my own logo or trying to do audio and video editing. I don't know anything yeah. about any of that. And I've learned it over this past year. Right. And I still have a lot to learn. But there's my creativity coming through and watching guys in companies like Black Rifle or other companies we've talked to. And people we've become friends with through this year talking to people. It's like, okay, I can be creative. I, I have it in me, you know. And it's motivating. And I, that's important. Motivation is important in, in all aspects of the life. Yeah, it's the motivation and the follow through with dedication, and just yeah. kind of like what we talked about with the uh, the photography. It's like that that is my trade that I learned. Like I followed my dad's footsteps or like his advice. Like even though I basically told him to f off, <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna be a plumber. Um, and but just like the idea of that, and kind of like we had this conversation talking about transitioning out of the military and the civilian, and like how do we like maintain that mission mindset and and work towards that, and like photography was one of those things like i took the equipment learned it um and then once you get that base that baseline foundation of education then you can add in your creativity into that and start playing around with functionality the lenses and whatnot and and then start to get those creative juices flowing and then just be the nerd just like have fun yeah. with it yeah, yeah absolutely well like i mean so we're all older um and like so cam you're pretty much ex you're, on, you're on an accelerator program I would say like yeah uh, you want to just kind of tell like the past like year and a half two years for you black rifle? well I mean like your deployment and coming back and then black rifle yeah so I don't know I've I've always kind of loved art you know What's that? and I've had that creative kind of flow going on back when I was in high school I'm only 23 so I mean probably the youngest one in this entire tent <laughs> right now but um, I left for the military, kind of lost some of my creativity, got deployed, wasn't around it a whole lot, but I was doing a super cool job. I mean, UH-60 crew chief on, on the Black Hawk, and it was, it was super cool, but I came home, and I didn't know what I was going to do, and I got a job at Black Rifle and was working with them, and then I picked up a stylus and, and a tablet, and I just started drawing again. He was in the print shop, though. Yes. Okay. So I started in the print shop, and slinging shirts and I mean all these shirts you guys are wearing I probably helped print you know oh, well wow. and then I started drawing and our uh, our manager at the time was like oh this guy can he, he can probably do something for us you know so uh, then we kind of created it wasn't the art department at the time is more of a uh, apparel development department I don't know it wasn't really formed all the way okay but, um, and then Chris came along and I think Chris was like yeah no you can kind of draw like was day was two day like, two yeah because evan evan was like just see if anybody see if any we can do something with anybody yeah you might want to handle a mic oh. <laughs> <laughs> no i don't really, i mean I, I mean basically it was just like you know is there anybody that's that's at black rifle currently that like we could flame spot and like i could teach that was the main thing about coming down there and so uh like <laughs> we were walking through the parking lot one day and i was like i don't think we're going to hire anybody like i think it's just the guys that are already here just focus it a little bit differently. Yeah. Well, it almost seems like from the outside looking in, sometimes jobs are just created for a certain individual. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, seen, I've, I've, seen, I've seen that. What happened with him? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. seen that within a couple of guys I'm buddies with that work with Black Rifle, like I've, or didn't, and now they do. Mm -hmm. It's like a job is created to, oh, yeah. to cater to that person, and it, 
it fucking works, yeah, obviously. Or, yeah, yeah, or where they're doing something else, and they're like, holy shit, you have a bunch of these other skills. Yeah. And, like, I mean, I would say a handful of us, well, I mean, a bunch of us are veterans there, but we have different skills outside of just yeah. military, you know? Yeah. And, like, that was the past four or five years of my life was just all military. Yeah. And straight from a deployment to drawing, like, I don't think I'd be where I'm at now. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I would say, yeah, Black Rifle is like, okay, like, you can do this. Yeah. Like, you have all these other skills. Let's, let's take control of that, you know? And mm-hmm. so it is sweet. Oh, yeah. Super cool. Well, should we wrap this up so we can get on the road? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We still have to drive back to Boise, but I'm, I'm like, thank you guys for sitting there because we were going to get you guys all on separately and we just went ahead and did it here and i'm glad we did that works dude so, this was like shop talk this it was, was awesome. and yeah. this was yeah this was fucking awesome and we one of these days have you guys back on we can do them you know with just one of you at a time yeah. if you come through boise if any of you no we're still gonna go out with morgan and go yeah yeah we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna do a hunt we need to do a chucker hunt yeah and then wrap up af- if we're not on the hospital afterwards yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I probably will be but just bring like a, a gurney or something yeah it's Sing basically carry. like chasing mountain goats up the hill but they're birds <laughs> yeah as long as you have water you'll be right but yeah, yeah we'll have you guys on separately as well and so awesome thank you guys for oh, doing this yeah and yeah. we'll do it again cheers Peace.